Hi, this is Mark from Wiki Design. In this Jet Engine tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can add featured images to your categories. I'm also going to show you how you can display your categories in a listing grid like this. And as an added bonus, I'm also going to show you how you can use the Query Builder in Jet Engine for more advanced filtering for your listing grid. So the very first thing you're going to need to do is make sure that you already have Jet Engine installed and activated on your website. And if you haven't really played around with Jet Engine, I think it's one of the most powerful plugins that you can add on top of WordPress. So I'm going to leave an affiliate link in the description below if you want to help support this channel. Let's just jump into the back end and get started. Here we are on the back end of this website. And as you can see, I'm underneath Post and Categories. And by default, of course, WordPress doesn't give you the ability to have a category image like this. So I'm just going to call this a featured image. So what we wanted to do is have a featured image for all of our blog posts right here. And as you can see right here, I've already added in a simple description. And then on some of these, I added a category image. So that's what this page is right here. The first six, I already have an image and displayed it in a listing grid. So now I'm going to show you how easy it is to add this inside Jet Engine. The first thing you need to do is go underneath Jet Engine and Meta Boxes. And what this meta box is going to do is just add that ability for you to change your image on your categories. So you're just going to want to go ahead and click add new. And I already have this one right here, but uh, what you need to do first is give it a title. So in this case, I'm just calling it post category images. The meta box needs to be selected as a taxonomy down here. Make sure you have categories. And of course, if you're using a custom post type or anything like that, you can always change that as well. And then right here is where you're going to be adding in a new meta field. So you're just going to click add new meta field. And in this case, I'm just going to call it category image. And then this right here is going to be uh, an important thing that you're going to have to maybe copy to your clipboard because we're going to need this later in the tutorial. And the next thing is just make sure you select field. Field type is media. So that gives you the ability to upload to the media library. And just make this say uh, media ID. And that's it. That's all you need to do. Just hit update meta box. And now when you go into your post categories, you should see this new section right down here. The next thing I recommend is go ahead and make sure that you have your featured image on a handful of your uh, blog post right here. So the way it's going to work is now we need to add a listing grid to make sure that you can display all of these things. And what we need to do first is create a listing and then we can do the listing grid. So the way it works is you need to make sure that you already have an image in the first few. So that way, when you start to do the listing grid, it will look correct on the back end. So like I said, add your images into there. And now you could jump into Jet Engine and listings because now we're going to start to design how that's going to look. So you just want to go ahead and click add new. And I already have this one. And this is how it needs to be uh, laid out. So what we need to do is for the listing source, make sure you have terms, the taxonomy, make sure you have categories, and then just give it a name. And in this case, we're going to be using Elementor. So now, as you can see, I have a regular image widget right here in Elementor, and I'm pulling in that new featured image for the category. And the way I did this is, let me get rid of this right here. So you need to click on dynamic tags right here. And if you scroll down into Jet Engine where it says Term Image, make sure you select that. And then you need to click it again. And under Taxonomy, make sure you select Categories. And then your meta field is going to be whatever you named it uh, inside your meta boxes. So if you remember in the beginning of the tutorial, when you create your meta box right here for your featured image, you have to assign it a unique ID. And that's what this is right here. So Category-Image in my case. So you just need to go ahead and make sure you add that in there. And then it should automatically populate right here. And like I said before, this listing grid is going to pull in the very first uh, category. So that's why you need to make sure that you at least add an image to the very first category inside your post, because then nothing's going to show up on the back end right here. And then the rest of it is pretty simple. Uh, same thing. You need to go underneath your term field. So if you click on dynamic tags, uh, this is just using a regular header uh, widget inside Elementor. So if you look right here, Jet Engine, Term Field, Taxonomy, Categories, Field, and then they give you these different ones right here. So you can just type in Term Name, and you can see right here it's called Blogging. And this is very similar. I'm just using the text editor. So inside Elementor, you can just click Dynamic Tags. Underneath Jet Engine, Term Field, make sure your taxonomy is Categories. 
and then your term description. So your term description is, if you aren't familiar with how that works, is underneath here. You give it uh, each one of your categories, you can give it a description. So it's pretty useful to add that in here because if you want to display it on the front end, this is all just you know meta descriptions right here. So that's how you design the front end where you have your featured image, your title for your categories, and your description. And in most cases, you're probably going to want to make sure that these things look clickable and go into that category uh, page itself. So as you can see, when I click on here, it goes to category branding. When I click on this one, it goes to category business. And in this case, I am using the newer container system inside Elementor. And what's nice is, as you can see right here, I have the whole container and you can make that all clickable to that term. And in order to do that, you just go underneath uh, your container underneath additional options you can click this button right here it says dynamic tags term field under jet engine categories and then just term url and if you're not using the new container system or if you want to add that to a button it's the same thing you're just going to make sure that it's term field categories term url that's it and as you can see the whole thing is now clickable now that you have your listing design, now we can go ahead and add the listing grid and it will automatically populate, you know, within your feed right here. So what I have right here is just a simple page with a listing grid. So you just want to go ahead and create a new page. I pulled in the listing grid and if you go right underneath here where it says listing, you're just going to want to type in your listing name and then it will automatically populate. So that's it. That's how easy it is to show the feed right here. And of course, if you want to show a different amount, like if you don't want to show four, you can do that. If you want to show 10, you can do that. Uh, as you can see, I don't have images on all of them right here. So if that type of functionality is good, you don't need to worry about doing any custom queries or anything like that. If you're happy with the way this is looks, you can just hit update. So now I'm going to show you how you can add more advanced functionality into your feed. So if you jump over into Jet Engine and your Query Builder right here, um, I already have one already selected, but you can go ahead, just click Add New. And in my case, I'm just gonna jump into this one. I'm gonna call this one just Post Category Query, nothing fancy. And what I recommend is this button right here where it says Preview Results, make sure you have that on, because what it's gonna do is right over here in real time, it's looking into your database and will show you exactly how many results you have right here. So in this case, I have 20 blog post categories. And what you need to do is make sure that your query type is terms query and your taxonomy right here is at categories. And I'm going to go ahead and just hide the empty. So anything that's empty won't show up because if you see when I turn that off, this right here, the results now show 26. So probably in most cases you don't want to show a category if it's empty. So you can turn that on and you can see it in real time. Now the results count as 20. And in this case, let's just go ahead and just show like the other one, six. So what this is going to do is just show six uh, results per page. So if I hit update right there, what you can do now is underneath your uh, listing grid, if you go underneath general, select this right here, custom query, select this on, and I have the one I just added. So it's going to look just like the one I have now, but now we can go ahead and sort this stuff totally different. So let's go ahead, hit update and jump back into your query right here and let's flip it. So let's go order by um, highest to lowest. So now what that's going to do is flip it where now it's not going to be in alphabetical order, you know, starting from A to Z, it's going to go from Z to A. So now you can see right here, it's starting with WordPress and goes down to web design. So that gives you a lot of flexibility right there, but let's go ahead and choose lowest to highest. And let's go ahead and add, um, instead of uh, six, let's just do four. So now you're gonna see when I do that, if I hit refresh right here, it's just gonna show four starting from A, you saw in this case, blogging, branding, business, business tips. So that's what's cool about this query builder is you have a lot of flexibility right here. Now, in my case, I do have a situation where if you go right here, you can see here are all my blog post uh, categories. And you can see right here, it starts with B, 
And what's happening is you see this category right here called videos. It's pulling in this one right here called business tips. So these feeds aren't going to show the parent right here. So what's happening is business tips is getting shown right underneath here. So as you can see right here, business tips is showing. Now let's go ahead and say I want to exclude all of the categories underneath videos. And in order to do that, what you need to do is click on the videos parent right here. And what we need to do is right here where it says ID equals 46. We need to exclude all of the children and the parent from that feed. So what we can do is just copy this right here where it says 46, because that right here is your video ID. So if we jump back into that query builder, we can exclude uh, ID number 46. So if we jump back into the query builder, we can exclude the ID 46 and it's going to limit the results. So as you can see right here at 20. So if we go into include exclude and just type in 46 right here where it says exclude tree. So that's going to exclude anything that's like empty or anything that's underneath that ID. So now we're down to 13. So if we hit update and go back to this page and refresh, you're going to see that I got rid of that one called business tips. So now it's showing the feed the way I want it to show, which is blogging, branding, business, digital nomad. So as you can see, this query builder is really powerful. You can do a lot of cool stuff with this. You can start to include, exclude certain things. You can do a lot within here. So what I recommend is playing around with here and you know changing out these values depending on how your use case is gonna be. But um, yeah, I would get used to using the query builder because with Jet Engine, this can be used for all different types of things on your website. So that's it for this tutorial on how to add featured images to your blog categories. Make sure that you give this video a like, subscribe to this YouTube channel, and hit that bell to receive notifications when I release new tutorials like this. Again, this is Mark from Wiki Design.